during this conference, we have been talking about what it means to be a man of God and a loyal son of the church. A few years ago, I got a lesson in what it means to be a loyal son of the church when I was speaking at a family conference in California. And the keynote speaker that summer was one of the most extraordinary men that I've ever known. Bishop Andrew Francis of the Diocese of Moton, Pakistan. Bishop Francis has been in the Catholic news recently for advocating the cause for canonization of Shabazz Bati. Shabazz Bati was the Catholic cabinet minister, the only Christian member of the Pakistani government who was ambushed, shot and killed by Islamic militants back in March of last year. Shabazz Bati was targeted by Muslim radicals for his courageous, outspoken defense of human rights, the rights of Christians, the rights of women and the poor, and especially for his criticism of the country's so-called blasphemy laws, which essentially make it a crime to openly profess any faith other than Islam. Now, Shabazz Pati knew he was going to die. He had gotten so many death threats he told the bishops there he knew he was going to be assassinated. It was only a matter of time. But he told them that he was ready, ready to give his life for Christ. Shortly before his death, he issued a statement to the Christians of Pakistan. He said this, I have been asked to put an end to my battle, but I have always refused, even at the risk of my own life. My response has always been the same. I do not want popularity. I do not want positions of power. I only want a place at the feet of Jesus. I want my life, my character, my actions to speak of me and say that I am following Jesus Christ. This desire is so strong in me that I consider myself privileged whenever in my combative effort to help the needy, the poor, the persecuted Christians of Pakistan, Jesus should wish to accept the sacrifice of my life. I want to live for Christ, and it is for him that I want to die. I do not feel any fear in this country. Obviously, the martyrdom of Shabazz Bati is being taken very seriously in Rome. The Vatican Secretary of State has announced that the Bible that belonged to Shabazz Bati is now being kept there in Rome as part of a collection honoring the martyrs of the last century. So it would seem that soon enough Pakistan is going to have a saint. His great advocate is Bishop Andrew Francis. Now before I met Bishop Francis, I knew a little bit about Pakistan. I've heard it said that Pakistan is now one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Pakistan has got nuclear weapons, but the country is unstable. The government is unstable. The nation is in constant turmoil. There is a growing, ever more violent Islamic fundamentalist movement and a terrorist insurgency that is getting stronger by the day. The Christian minority there is being persecuted. There have been many murders, many churches burned or bombed, church leaders marked for assassination. Our Catholic brothers and sisters in that part of the world now live in fear. Now, I knew very little about Bishop Francis. I had heard that he himself had survived an assassination attempt. And I know that things there are not getting better. They are getting worse by the day. And the odds of his survival are not good. And I had developed some preconceived ideas about what Bishop Francis would be like. I thought that anybody in his situation a man marked for death would have to be someone of very grave demeanor, deadly serious, somber, somber mood. I mean, here is a man who in all likelihood has got one foot in the grave. He's a dead man walking. But when I met him, I found that he was not like that at all. 
in fact he was exactly the opposite of what we were expecting he was joyful he was personable he was laid back he was witty great sense of humor quick with a joke he invited a couple of us priests to have lunch with him that Saturday afternoon and we found him to be just great company a man of deep faith and great learning and we were so impressed with him that you couldn't help but think that here is a man who radiates Christ a peaceful joyful spirit in spite of it all and when I was with him all the while I was saying to myself how can this be how can he be the way that he is how can he be so cheerful so relaxed so upbeat obviously so much at peace when his world is so full of turmoil danger persecution death how can it be I thought about this and then it hit me the answer came to me I understood I thought of the words of the Apostle St. Paul the life that I live now is no longer my own it is no longer I who live it is Christ living in me St. Paul wrote from imprisonment in Rome awaiting execution rejoice always I say it again rejoice I thought here is a bishop a man truly after the heart of Christ here is a man filled with the Holy Spirit and power a man who radiates the joy the love the peace of Christ this my brothers is the mark of a God dominated personality the transforming power of grace on a soul indwelt by the Holy Spirit the true love that casts out fear he's got it he's got it all now when Bishop Francis spoke at the conference he told a story that I'll never forget about a boy in his diocese a ten-year-old boy named Shalom Admali now this boy Shalom Admali had just received the sacrament of confirmation he had been confirmed by Bishop Francis and this kid was on fire with the grace of the Holy Spirit he had this anointing in the Holy Spirit and he just couldn't contain himself he couldn't keep it to himself he had to share that faith that fire that truth with everyone that he knew he had to tell everyone about Jesus now Shalom Admali lived in a predominantly Muslim village where the Christian and Muslim boys still play together and he was telling his friends about Jesus and talking about what he had learned at his catechism and singing the hymns that he knew and the Muslim boys went home and they told their parents what they had heard from Shalom and the parents went and told the local Muslim clerics the mullahs the mullahs became enraged they saw this as proselytizing now proselytizing by Christians is a very serious crime in Pakistan a crime punishable by imprisonment but that wasn't good enough for the mullahs they wanted this kid dead so they trumped up the charges against him they accused the boy of blasphemy defaming and insulting Islam and the Prophet a crime punishable by death death by hanging so 10-year-old Shalom Admali was arrested along with the adult males in his family they were put into prison and put on trial for blasphemy Bishop Francis and the other bishops of Pakistan sounded the alarm the word went out to Catholics and Christians all over Pakistan to pray Catholics gathered in their churches all over the country to pray to pray before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament to pray for justice and for the protection of this boy and his family when the day of the trial came Bishop Francis and some priests of the diocese the members of the boy's family went together to the courthouse to get into the courthouse they had to make their way through an angry mob a hostile crowd of about a thousand men all men stirred up into a fever pitch 
hands raised in the air, clenched fists, pumping, chanting, death, death, death to Shalom Mali. The case was tried by a panel of secular judges who, by the grace of God, saw through the falsehood of the charges, the malice of the mullahs. Shalom Admali was acquitted along with the members of his family and set free. While the boy and his family were on their way home as they stood and waited at a bus station, a gunman opened fire on them. Shalom Admali was hit, badly wounded. A member of his family was killed. Bishop Francis went to visit the boy in the hospital and they talked together and prayed together for a long time. The bishop asked the boy what he was going to do when he got out of the hospital, what he wanted to do when he got home. And the boy answered without hesitation, I'm going to tell everyone about Jesus. Brothers, I'll tell you in all honesty, it makes me shudder. It makes me shudder when I think of the courage of that boy. That ten-year-old boy is more of a man than I am. He is a more loyal son of the church than I am. That little boy in the face of persecution and imprisonment and death could not be intimidated, could not be shamed, could not be cowed into silence. That was the depth of his love, the love that casts out fear. When I think of our Catholic brothers and sisters in that part of the world and so many other parts of the world, facing persecution every single day, I wonder, I wonder, my brothers, how many of us would be ready to imitate their example, their courage, their virtue. And I ask myself the same question I'll ask you here and now. What are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? Why do so many of us, and when I say us, I mean Catholics in general, Catholics in America, fail time and time again to stand up, speak up to defend the cause of Christ? Why is it that time and time again, the culture of death seems to prevail over the culture of life? We are members of the mystical body of Christ. We rightly call ourselves the people of God, the people whose God is God, and we say, if God is for us, who can be against us? So, what are we afraid of? Why do we allow ourselves to be intimidated by the secular, agnostic, pagan culture that we live in? Why is it so many Catholics and Christians are content to sit back, stand by idly, and watch the pagan conquest of this country. Please, fellas, don't tell me that it's all different now. Please, don't talk to me about political correctness. Don't just tell me we're living in a pluralistic society. Leave it at that. God help us. You know what? It's like we are concerned with everyone's opinion but God's. We're afraid of offending everyone but God, so it seems. But you know, the world will tolerate everything and everyone but Christ. Christianity, the church, the truth. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So, brothers, what are we afraid of? Let's not kid ourselves, huh? Things in our country, spiritually speaking, are not getting better. They are getting worse. And I say to you again, time is not on our side in this. It is late in the game. All this time we've been talking about the spiritual battle of our time. Well, I would suggest to you 
The spiritual battle is very quickly becoming the spiritual massacre of our time. There's an old saying, freedom is not free. And don't think what has happened in other countries cannot and will not happen here. Every priest that I have spoken to in the past year is in agreement that persecution is coming to the church in America. It is only a matter of time. In the Bible, the Apostle St. James wrote that our life on this earth is like a mist. It is like a vapor that appears for just a short time and then vanishes. Life is short. It's too short. Short for all of us. We have come from God and we are going back to God and that means that every moment we are in this world is somehow precious to us because at every moment we really are making and shaping our eternal destiny. That is to say, we are making ourselves to be what we will be forever by the choices that we make here and now. So brothers, You've gotten your marching orders this weekend. <laughs> Make the most of the opportunity. Make the most of the gift of faith, the gift of life, the gift of time that God has given to you. The time to store up your treasure in heaven is now. The time to be reconciled with God and with your neighbor is now. The time to give of yourself to others is now. The time to cast out fear is now. The time to stand up, speak up, rise up in charity is now. The time to make a new commitment to Jesus Christ and his church and his gospel is now. Don't put it off. Don't put it off to tomorrow. Because you know, for many of us, tomorrow never seems to come. And before you know it, life will pass you by. Time to answer God's call is now, and if you will do that one day, you will have the joy of hearing our Lord say to you, Come, you blessed of my Father, and inherit that kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world.